Good morning, I'm Kenneth Moten. And I'm Janae Norman. Here are the top five things to know this Tuesday. Number one, every crew member of that capsized cargo ship off the coast of Georgia has now been rescued safely. The final man rescued endured nearly 36 hours with no food or water. At this point, crews are working to limit an oil spill from the wreck. It could take months to remove the vessel from that shipping channel. Number two, the Trump administration is laying out requirements for residents of the Bahamas who want to evacuate to the U.S. after Hurricane Dorian. The move comes after more than 100 people were kicked off a ferry to Florida because they didn't have visas. New U.S. guidelines issued last night call for all residents of the Bahamas to have a government-issued ID, such as passport. Meanwhile, we have new information about the extent of the destruction in the northern Bahamas. The power company says every power pole in a 16-mile stretch of land has been obliterated. The official death toll is now 50, but that is expected to rise dramatically. On to number three, North Korea has fired two more unidentified projectiles into the sea, its 10th launch since May. It came just hours after a top North Korean official said they're willing to resume nuclear talks with the U.S. if Washington comes to the table with acceptable proposals. In response, President Trump said, quote, we'll see what happens. We head to Nevada for number four. Controversy is growing over the so-called alien version of Woodstock. The Storm Area 51 Festival the festival is set to begin next week in the Nevada desert, but its organizers have some safety concerns, which has led its creator to pull out of the event. He's worried there won't be enough security, water, power, or toilets for the thousands of people expected to attend. Right now, we don't have a good feeling about people going out 150 miles into the desert without the resources that they need. And if we don't get the straight answers, um, we may have to explore other options. The owner of the property, who is also an organizer, says she's done as much as she can to get things ready. And finally, number five, a new study has positive news for teens who don't date. Researchers in Georgia found high school students who were not in romantic relationships had fewer instances of depression and better social skills. The study's authors say the results go against the idea that teens who don't date aren't as well adjusted as their peers. So save the troubles. All right, let's get right to that big story. The heroic rescue at sea. The final man trapped inside a capsized cargo ship off the coast of Georgia is finally safe this morning. We have new images of the rescue and new details about his long ordeal, which lasted nearly 36 hours. Meanwhile, there are growing environmental concerns stemming from this disaster. ABC Serena Marshall has that story. Serena, good morning. Kenneth Janae, good morning to both of you. Now, the U.S. Coast Guard captain said this rescue was thanks in part to those crew members knowing where to tap on the hull to alert crew members of where they were. Trapped for more than 30 hours. Daylight. The last Daylight. of the Golden Ray crew on land in this video captured by the Coast Guard. The four all smiles and relief following the daring rescue. Coast Guard rescue crews working for hours. Their condition is uh, is relatively good for having spent uh, you know close to 30, uh, 34 or 35 hours in the conditions they are in. The desperate rescue success attributed to salvagers locating the men after hearing them tap on the ship. More important that the uh, the crew knew where to go so they could touch the steel on the outside of the ship uh, to make those taps. The four crew members had originally been feared lost. The cargo ship just flipped over in the channel. You need to call Coast Guard. The massive cargo ship, carrying more than 4,000 cars, made a turn, capsized, and caught fire. 20 of the crew members were almost immediately pulled to safety, but rescue teams working in sweltering temperatures that felt like 120 degrees, drilling a hole three inches at a time into the hull's steel plates. Inside the ship, even hotter. But 36 hours after those first calls for help, all vessels are requested to keep a sharp lookout. Is this possible? All 24 crew members of the overturned 650 foot ship accounted for. The rescuers, proud of the happy ending they orchestrated. The work now turns to figuring out what exactly went wrong and trying to get that ship out of that very busy shipping lane. Kenneth Janae. And Serena, speaking of just the next phase of this, we see that oil slick there. So what concerns are there about how this will impact the environment? 
Kenneth, that is a very large oil slick. That's one of the things that they're turning towards now. It's figuring out exactly how to clean up after this uh, ship has overturned. Now, there are big concerns about the Oyster Bay population's tourism in that area, the marine life, of course. Now, there is an alert from the Division of Natural Resources against swimming in this area. Right now, we don't know exactly how big that oil slick is, but we do know that it can be seen and smelled up to a half mile away. Wow. Kind of and we could see it in yeah. some of that video. But Serena, really amazing rescue. Um, but we will be watching the next phase of this. Thank you, Serena. We appreciate it. In California, part of a major highway was temporarily shut down as firefighters battled a fast moving brush fire. Mandatory evacuations were briefly ordered about 140 miles northwest of Los Angeles, where four small fires merged into one. The northbound 101 freeway was closed. The flames were being pushed by 20 mile per hour winds. Officials said about 10,000 people were without power for a while, but they are expected to have it back overnight. The U.S. border chief says the number of migrants trying to cross into the U.S. from Mexico continues to decline. Acting Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Mark Morgan said federal agents stopped about 64,000 people at the southern border in August. That's down from 82,000 in July. He credits the administration's policy of forcing asylum seekers to remain in Mexico as well as new measures by the Mexican government. And new scrutiny for Google now facing an investigation by 48 states. The bipartisan group of attorneys general is looking into the tech giant's dominance in search and advertising, specifically allegations of anti-competitive practices and predatory conduct. They say Google dominates the buyer side, the seller side, and has the power to put a user on page one or page 100. Now to President Trump lashing out during a campaign rally in North Carolina last night. He made it clear that his eyes are set on 2020 and the Democrats. In the meantime, he's facing controversy in Washington with calls for his Commerce Secretary, Wilbur Ross, to resign. With 2020 on his mind. Tomorrow is your chance to send a clear message to the America-hating left. President Trump unloaded on Democrats in North Carolina. The radical Democrats want to dismantle, demolish, and destroy everything that you've gained. The president visited the battleground state to support Republican Dan Bishop, who's running in today's special election to fill a vacant House seat. Dan Bishop will fight with everything he has. This special election in the Tar Heel state is being seen as a test for how the Republican message is resonating in suburban areas ahead of the 2020 election. With the president's approval rating dipping below 40 percent, some of his supporters say they're worried. This whole state seems to be turning Democrat lately. I think Elizabeth Warren could be a threat. Our latest poll shows Senator Elizabeth Warren up six points since July. In North Carolina, ABC's Rachel Scott They're asked the president's team about the Warren's stars. surge. The president's campaign telling me tonight there is no denying that Senator Warren has been on the rise, but they say at this point they have not identified any particular Democratic candidate as a threat. Meanwhile, back in Washington, new fallout from the president's claim that Hurricane Dorian was threatening Alabama. Alabama could even be in for at least some very strong winds and something more than that. This morning, there are new calls for Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross to resign after the New York Times reported Ross threatened to fire employees at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for contradicting the president by saying Dorian was not threatening Alabama. The Commerce Department calls the New York Times report false, adding Secretary Ross did not threaten to fire any NOAA staff over forecasting and public statements. At a weather conference Monday, a show of support from members of the National Weather Service's Birmingham office, which first corrected the president. The Birmingham office did this to stop public panic, to ensure public safety. The top scientist at NOAA says he's investigating the agency's response and whether it violated any policies. The federal government is ordering e-cigarette company Juul to stop making unproven claims for its vaping products. The FDA says Juul wrongly claimed its products had a lower risk of tobacco-related disease or are less harmful. Such claims must first be proven by the FDA and Juul's weren't. Both the FDA and FTC are investigating how Juul markets its products, as are several states. And First Lady Melania Trump is adding her voice, tweeting that she is concerned about, quote, the growing epidemic of e-cigarette use in our children. Meanwhile, an Alabama high school took stern measures to stop teens from smoking and vaping in restrooms. It removed stall doors in some boys' bathrooms. Two weeks ago, a student was found passed out in a stall after vaping. The doors are back on after parents complained. Alabama health officials are now investigating five reports of potentially severe lung disease associated with vaping. Lung disease linked to vaping has been reported in 33 other states. 
For the third time, a baby has been born at a Texas hospital after a uterus transplant. The baby girl was delivered at Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. Neither the uterus donor nor the recipient know the other's identity. The researchers say it's further evidence that uterus transplants may be an option for women who are unable to conceive. Coming up, the story behind the viral video. This preschooler welcomed back after riding out Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas. But first, wildfires ravaging Australia. Why this year's fire season may be worse than normal after this. Welcome back. We're just two days away from the third Democratic primary debate hosted by ABC News in Houston. And while candidates are busy preparing, students at the historically black Texas Southern University are waiting to see what they have to say about a key issue. ABC's Devin Dwyer is there on campus. Good morning, Devin. Hey, good morning, Kenneth and Janae. We're on the campus of Texas Southern University. Beautiful, steamy day here. They are ready for a debate. This is one of the nation's oldest and largest historically black colleges and universities. It says a lot about why the Democrats chose this place for the debate. A diversifying America, so important this campaign in Houston is really a symbol of that, one of the most diverse and largest cities in America. I've been talking to students on campus today about the importance of this debate. I'm over here uh, with student government president Marcus Nash. Marcus, great to see you. You great were just saying that a lot of students excited about Absolutely. watching this debate Thursday night. Tell us about it. What are you hoping to hear? I'm hoping to hear the importance of this debate. Also, I'm here to, to look at the, the candidates and what they have planned for the HBCUs and what they have planned for the United States. Uh, last thing for you, what do you hope to hear from the candidates specifically? What, do you, what are you most looking for when you listen to this debate on Thursday? A great question. Uh, one thing I'll be looking for is what do they have planned for HBCUs and how can they enhance the academics of students at HBCUs regarding student debt, uh, student loans, and the graduation rate at HBCUs, producing great leaders into the environment and the community. Important to you, really important to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. All right, it's a big moment for, uh, yeah. for these guys here on TSU. Marcus Nash, thanks so Thank much, you. student. Uh, government president here on campus. A lot of excitement uh, and a lot of interest in hearing the specific policies of the candidates, Kenneth and Janae. Um, a lot of open minds, as you just heard from Marcus there, interest in policy it's toward HBCUs, criminal justice reform, gun policy, a big topic here in Texas with those two mass shootings last month. So a lot to keep your eyes on. Thursday night on ABC, coverage starts uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern time right here on ABC News Live. Kenneth and Janae. All right, our thanks to Devin. The British government has formally suspended Parliament, sparking outrage over what Prime Minister Boris Johnson's opponents say is an effort to stop lawmakers from studying his plan. Take a look at the chaos that erupted in the House of Commons. The Lords who are authorized by Her Majesty's Commission to declare, to declare her royal assent to acts passed by both houses and to also declare the prorogation of Parliament desire the presence of this honourable house. Really? No. 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 I completely understand why very large numbers of members are much more comfortable staying where they are. Mr. Stewart, if you don't like it, you're perfectly entitled to your view. I couldn't give a flying flamingo what your view is. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah. So let's go across now the pond to Julia McFarland in the London Bureau. Julia, good morning. So please explain what in the world was that? Hey guys, well, you know, we Brits, we love our pomp and ceremony, don't we? But not quite like this. What you guys just saw, uh, that is the usual process uh, for the ending of a parliamentary session. A senior officer from the upper house, the House of Lords, usually starts a ceremony, uh, but she was barely heard, as you see, over the roar of opposition MPs crying out, shame, shame on you, uh, as government conservative MPs left the House. Now, the, it was extraordinary scenes in Parliament yesterday. A number of things happened. Uh, the Speaker, John Burko, announced that he would stand down uh, in a number of weeks uh, as MPs filed out. Some even tried to stop him from leaving. Uh, now, Boris Johnson, he suffered his sixth defeat in as many days uh, last night when MPs again voted against holding 
holding a snap election. Now the clock is ticking down uh, to the 31st of October. MPs have forced uh, Mr. Boris Johnson to uh, ask the EU for an extension in the date to leave the EU if he can't get a deal. But now, as you see, uh, parli the parliamentary session is now over. It'll return in mid-October, where MPs only have two days uh, to determine the outcome of whether Britain leaves the EU or not. Mr. Johnson uh, wants desperately to ensure that does happen. Wow. I mean, incredible that you guys don't see those images too often, but we see that right. on Capitol Hill. A couple times a month, probably. <laughs> um, and Julia, in Australia, brush fires are raging, even in the country's rainforest, and what experts say is much earlier than the usual fire season. Exactly, Janae. Um, one of the regional premiers actually uh, hinted that this was down to climate change, citing increased temperatures uh, for a greater risk to the threat of wildfires in Australia. Two states, Queensland and New South Wales, saw more than 130 wildfires. Uh, there were 300 firefighters battling uh, to put out the blades. Uh, the blaze, hundreds of people had to evacuate from their homes. So some really, really upsetting scenes there. And in Russia, President Vladimir Putin's party has uh, suffered some rare election losses after weeks of protests where thousands rallied over opposition candidates being barred from running. So how rare is this and what could it mean for Putin? Exactly. This is a really interesting moment for Russian politics. These are municipal elections, uh, uh, Moscow City Council elections. So perhaps not massively indicative of a national pattern. Uh, but the images that this shows to the rest of the country is going to be quite interesting. Now, this has uh, this has been precipitated by weeks of protests uh, in the capital after the government barred opposition candidates from taking part in the polls. Now, what we saw uh, yesterday after votes were counted on, on Monday uh, was that out of the 45-seat parliament in the Moscow City Council, uh, the, the Kremlin party had 40 seats that's now down to 24. Uh, so some big, big losses for Putin, uh, coupled with the images of all of those anti-government protests. Uh, things are not looking great for Vladimir Putin right now. All, all right. right. Julia, thank you so much for we joining us this it. morning. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Let's check our yeah, notifications it's now. It's that time. Starting with a belated happy birthday to one of our favorite cartoon characters. Donald Duck was created by Walt Disney in this, this summer, 85 years ago. Whoa, Walt yeah. created Donald when he heard Clarence Nash, a struggling voiceover artist reciting Mary Had a Little Lamb on a local radio show. Since then, many have tried to imitate his voice, but few have come close until this guy who used his impression to get back at a telemarketer. Hello? Are you there? Is this the real Donald? Yes, I'm Donald. This is Donald Sazmore. Who are you? Hello? This is Laura from Canadian Pharmacy. I'm calling with regards to your medication. Oh, no. Am I in trouble? And you know Am Walt Disney, trouble? the father of our parent company, uh, Walt Disney Company. Um, that's that man there though is 77 year old Donald Sizemore of Alabama and that's how he gets revenge on telemarketers that video has already racked up more than 9 million views because we all can mm -hmm. identify with dealing with telemarketers so that's our question of the day how do you deal with telemarketers yeah. when they call do you put on a funny Anything voice good. do you um, do that okay, thing yeah. where you say hello hello hello, hello? hold on I can't hear you and yet. you just keep them on they think they're talking you to waste you waste their time tell us what you do Tell us in the comments or tweet us at ABC News Live. Hey, next to a close call for a kitten trying to cross the road, but luckily a good Samaritan there swooped in, helped the kitty cat out. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. wow. I'm just in the nick of time. Holy cow. Um, and we'll stick with the animal theme. Yeah. Appreciating this unusual friendship in the animal world, a dog and a porcupine. Our best friends. That porcupine was abandoned by its porcupine mom. Well, we're Somebody, not judging. We, no, don't no, 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 no. we don't know what happened. We don't know the story. We don't know the circumstances, but he was taken in to, by someone who wanted to give him a better life, and he's got a best friend because of it. And we have a new world record. Woo! It was set right outside our studios here in New York. That man right there, Dalton Smith, was on live with Kelly and Ryan using his powerful pogo stick to jump over four cars parked side by side. Yep, he cleared them all with plenty of room to spare. Oh, my goodness. Smith broke his own Guinness World Record, which was jumping over Ooh. three cars, and he got a plaque to prove it. And watch as these two best friends race to hug The it sweetest out. video. Wait for it. Look at them. 
adorable wow. right here in New York City. We love these toddlers. My yes. friend, you are just adorable. And I so. love the voice. Yes, you are. <laughs> a little voiceover for you there. <laughs> and a preschooler returning to class of Florida has gone viral after getting stuck in the mm -hmm. Bahamas during Hurricane Dorian. Heartwarming video shows the warm welcome he received from his classmates. Janine Stanwood from our Miami station has the story. The video has already been viewed thousands of times on social media. What you see are little kids at preschool embracing their classmate. What you might not know is what this little boy just endured. Was it nice when everybody hugged you? Yeah. Three-year-old Makai was visiting family with his mom in Freeport over the Labor Day weekend, only to get stuck thanks to Hurricane Dorian. They rode out the storm in Grandma's house. At one point, like our door just flew open, and Makai was like, "Oh my God!" Like he thought the Dorian was a monster. That mom says Makai put on a brave face in the aftermath, in the middle of having to wring out his soaked clothes and throw out ruined toys. At one point, he put on this Spider-Man life vest because he wanted to help. And he put it on, and he was like, "Mommy, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna save the children in the water." And so, after coming back to Pembroke Pines, little did he know. <laughs> He'd get his own superhero welcome. And as soon as he walks in the class, the whole entire class jumps up and they're like, Oh my God, Makai, Makai, we missed you, we missed you. Those tiny classmates giving giant embraces and a big lesson in humanity. What did they say to you? They missed they you. Miss you. Kids are really pure and they're really innocent. And I think that that's something that we are, as adults, that we have to really learn from, especially during times like this. Such I a love it. Story. Love those images yeah. there after a very tough week, I'm sure, for he and his family yeah. to come back to that. All right, well, coming up, we've got a look at the day ahead, including a busy day on Capitol Hill. And don't miss the presidential candidate who went crowd surfing. Yep, we'll show you the video after this. All right, here's what to watch out for today. President Trump will lunch with Vice President Pence before speaking at the National Historically Black Colleges and Universities Week conference in Washington. Then he'll meet with congressional Republican leaders and participate in the swearing in of the new U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Kelly Craft. On Capitol Hill, the House Committee on Homeland Security will hold a hearing on threats to the homeland. The Congressional Black Caucus will mark the 400th anniversary of the first recorded arrival of enslaved Africans in Jamestown, Virginia. House Republicans will hold a hearing on the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. Comedian Hassan Minaj will testify to the House Financial Services Committee on Student Loans. And the House Gun Violence Prevention Task Force will hold a forum on the urgent need for Senate action on gun policy. Apple is expected to unveil its subscription TV service and new iPhone models at the Steve Jobs Theater at its Cupertino, California headquarters. Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency is scheduled to launch a cargo spaceship to the International Space Station. And Prince Harry will attend the Invictus Games' fifth anniversary celebration in London. Plus, don't forget to tune into the debrief for an update on all our top stories in the briefing room for a breakdown of the latest headlines in politics. And finally, at least one Democratic presidential candidate is getting a whole lot of love. Businessman Andrew Yang has racked up supporters over his primary policy idea of paying everybody a thousand bucks a month for doing nothing. And we're seeing just how well the idea of free money for everyone's going over. Look at this. At an appearance at a forum in Southern California, Yang crowd surfed his way through the room. So far, Yang's support is still only polling in the single digits. Um, depending on how far he goes, I'm pretty sure the Secret Service will have a problem with that. With the crowd down surfing? The, yeah, down I the line so. there. Um, but it looks like it was fun. A reminder, we're just two days away from the next debate. ABC News We'll be hosting this Thursday's Democratic debate in Houston. George Stephanopoulos, David Muir, Lindsey Davis, and Univision's Jorge Ramos will be moderating. That begins at 8 p.m. Eastern over on ABC. We'll have coverage right here on ABC We're News Live as well. We're going to have all the coverage. All the coverage. All the coverage. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it for us. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.